still coming in. That's wonderful. And for those of you, those of you that have already come in, everybody who enrolls and registers, you, you will get a link uh, later this evening or tomorrow so you can watch this in your own time afterwards. OK, so everyone will get the link and any questions that you wish to ask, put them in the chat box and I'll be responding to those as well. We probably won't have time in the session because we're on a pretty tight schedule, but feel free to ask questions and I'll respond uh, separately. OK, but you can all watch this uh, afterwards. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome to the Rosen College virtually. Okay, Ariane, am I good? Am I good to go? Are we good to record? Oh, we're recording. Let's go. Ah, oh, lovely. Thank you. Okay, th thank you, everybody. It's excellent to see so many people, uh, so many students this afternoon. And as I've just said, if, if you wish to watch this uh, afterwards, you can. Th this recording will go be circulated to everybody who's attending today and those that uh, were unable to do so. I think many of you probably know me already, but I'm Dr. Alan Farl. I'm the Associate Dean at the College. Um, but the important people for, for this first session today is really, really good friends and supporters of the Rosen College. Uh, Jeff Benavides from Orange County, uh, Jared Byers uh, from Legacy Vacation Resorts and Certified B Corps, and Jennifer Rupert from the East Central Florida Regional Planning Council. We're particularly pleased to welcome Jeff today. Jeff is a Rosen College graduate from 2009. So applause for Jeff. And I think this demonstrates how you may come to the Rosen College for one particular career, but you move in a slightly different direction. So uh, each of them will introduce themselves when they speak uh, in a few minutes time. Students, really, really important. We're, we're delighted that so many of you joined us this afternoon and will be joining us virtually afterwards. 100 prep hours. This is a great opportunity and it's a real opportunity. This is something that is not fabricated. It's something that is happening now with Orange County. For 100 prep hours, you need to register for the four workshops and submit your video no later than March 25th uh, this year. OK, so that is a key date, March 25th and four workshops in the video submission. So a really good opportunity. This opportunity, it's all about change. And for people of my age, change is happening now and it's coming quicker than you think. And I just put three images up here just to serve as a taster. Top left, you can see just by over on the 429. This is one of uh, Disney's solar sites. Huge investment by Disney, huge recognition that clean energy is the way forward. Bottom left, you have Airbus, the major uh, aircraft manufacturer based in Toulouse in France, committing to zero emission commercial aircraft. Wow, who would have thought that a few years ago? Mm -hmm. And more familiar, certainly those of you who live in central Florida, electric cars. And I would say probably over the past month or two, the most game-changing announcement I've seen actually came from General Motors. General Motors, this was, uh, as I say, it's an announcement a week or two ago, planning to eliminate, uh, eliminate gas and diesel light duty cars and SUVs by 2035. That is only 14 years from now. Incredible. All these things in some shape or form will impact the industry that we're so passionate about. So and this is the reason for today. We've got a, a county leader and an industry leader to stimulate you to think for the future. Workshops two, three, and four, very quickly. They come every Thursday. If you can't attend in person, do not worry. As long as you enroll and you watch afterwards, that's absolutely fine. Next week, we have Joe Tankersley, who's 20 years of experience as a Disney Imagineer. Joe is an amazing guy, and he's going to educate us, how do we think like a futurist? Okay, it, it will be fun. Uh, the week after that, it's myself and my good colleague, Carissa Baker, who's a theme park specialist. We'll be looking at tourism experience design. And then the final session, uh, workshop four, is all about how do you tell your story and how do you produce a video? So it's Carissa, 
Joe again, formerly of Disney, and Giselle Canova, one of our amazingly brilliant uh, internship team. I'm not going to read all this. This is on the website. The key focus is March 25, everybody. But the key thing as we go through, it's really thinking how do, does your idea, how does your design, how do your innovations, how does it help Orange County for Vision 2050? So this is all about the county and what tourism and hospitality can do to move Orange County in its desired direction. And my good friend Jeff Benavides will introduce this in one moment, because clearly all this is about where do we go from here? OK, the future is changing very, very quickly. And on this note, I'm going to pass a screen share to Jeff Benavides all the way from Orange County, just down the road. Jeff, welcome to the Rose. Welcome back to the Rosen College. And you have 20 minutes to tell us about Orange County. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, it's an honor to be here and uh, especially as a Rosen College alum and keep it it moving forward uh, in our community. So just for clarity, I'm gonna give you some very basics on Orange County, just so that we're clear as to what the county is and give you some background so that you can be more effective in your uh, project. So I appreciate everyone's uh, participation during this effort. I'll give you everyone uh, some background. So let me share my screen here. <clears throat> All right. So uh, just for some facts here uh, to keep in mind as to why tourism is so important here in Central Florida, not just from uh, the impacts of tourism, positive or negative, but really just how we live with tourism here. So just so you know, this is a really interesting and crazy fact uh, of, you know, for every resident, we have about 1.4 million residents in Orange County. And uh, with the amount of tours that we receive per year, you can imagine how, uh, how intense that um, impact is here for our local community. So just for clarity, um, for everyone uh, and knowing, just to make sure you know where Orange County is, Orange County is this uh, that we see on the map here. It's made up of a variety of different cities, including Orlando. Um, and I'm here to tell you where are we and just making sure that you have a good understanding what Orange County is, how big it is, and also where we're going. And uh, that's where you all come in as to where uh, you think we should go. So uh, as I mentioned before, not just the amount of tourists that we have per year, but also the amount of residents that we have that are constantly coming here, moving here. We have, of course, UCF, a lot of transient students. Uh, a lot of transient residents, but more importantly, a lot of folks that want to come here for a better quality of life. When we look at the realities, though, we're here at that 1.42 million people in our county that we had mentioned, uh, and that's collective among all the cities. But our projections have us at about uh, four, you know, 48 percent increase by that 2050 vision that we have. So when you start thinking of the amount of growth in our region is pretty uh, stagnating. Uh, let's see. So just to introduce uh, a little bit more about myself, uh, as Alan mentioned, I am the Chief Sustainability and Resilience Officer for Orange County. Uh, Orange County has a uh, mayor, Mary Jerry uh, L. Demings. Uh, we're a little unique in Orange County than other counties across the country because we have a strong mayor form of government. So you all might be saying, well, isn't Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer um, the uh, mayor? Well, you're right. Uh, and here on the side, I have or Orange County's fun fact, as I mentioned in that other map, Orange County is made up of 13 cities and towns, including Orlando, Winter Park, Winter Garden, uh, Windermere. So some of those different areas that you uh, may work and live in as well as there's 13 different leaders. Some of these are town managers, elected officials, mayors. Uh, there's a mayor of Winter Park. There's a mayor of Wintermere. 
as well as some of the cities and town commissions. So each of those towns and uh, uh, cities that I mentioned also have their own form of government and elected officials that represent the residents and businesses that live there. So uh, my job here at Orange County is to make sure that we are building the community of tomorrow along with our variety of uh, staff that we uh, have appointed um, with the mayor uh, coming into transition in 2018. Um, but in his transition team report, innovation, collaboration, inclusion were of those key priorities. And there was a entire section de dedicated to smart growth and sustainability. So it is an honor for me to uh, serve here uh, and serve the community after being here for almost 15 years. And our goal is to build the community of tomorrow that works for everyone. So hopefully this quick little overview as to where we are and what the county does and how it's structured will give you some uh, background because we have a lot of moving parts. Um, the county acts as a major funding mechanism for our transportation infrastructure, solid waste infrastructure, water infrastructure, as well as all of our taxes, all of our property taxes, sales taxes from the state. Um, the county operates as a major uh, source of revenue for all of our cities and residents uh, that we have. Most of you, uh, and in fact, just as a fun fact for context, the Rosen College is located in unincorporated Orange County, along with about uh, 600 or 700,000 other residents that call unincorporated Orange County home. So while your address says Orlando, you technically don't live in the city of Orlando which is listed on the, uh, you can see it shaded here in this white uh, map. So I uh, always wanna just make sure that everyone is familiar with home and how we call home and define home. And all this really matters as we do further growth and development. So with that, as far as sustainability and community resilience, our goal uh, with the community tomorrow and in order to become that community, one of those attributes of a community of tomorrow is to become top ranked and recognized for sustainability and community resilience. Uh, the mayor's vision for a community of tomorrow still, uh, despite the pandemic and the challenges that we've been uh, dealt with the last year, um, is to build that uh, fully you know, operational, innovative, technology-driven community that you know, is uh, building that health and quality of life for everybody. We developed a two-phased approach. Uh, this phase one was really to lead by example with some, uh, some of our own internal actions. As a county, we operate a lot of facilities, parks, utilities, uh, services in the community. And we wanted to make sure that we were walking the walk and doing our part. Our phase two is really where this project comes in in our um, community. So really aligning our community-wide initiatives across all of our cities and counties, I'm sorry, cities and towns, um, as well as benefiting all of our businesses and residents through this Vision 2050 plan that you have seen and have alluded to in your, uh, in your website so far. So as I mentioned earlier, some of the biggest threats, just to give you some backdrop to this project, some of the biggest vulnerabilities, shocks, and threats that we have here in our community some may be apparent to you, but some not. Um, pressure on natural resources, including water, most importantly, is very vital for us here. It, not only when you consider the amount of residents that live here and the amount of growth, as I mentioned, but also the tourism industry that comes to here. So it is quite energy intensive as well as water intensive. Uh, that Blizzard Beach doesn't just magically come out of the ground. Um, and all of that water from the water slides has to go somewhere and we, you know, it's our job to keep it as efficient as possible. Um, lot, next, uh, traffic congestion and air quality and safety. Um, Orange County, unfortunately, has been ranked as, uh, as, as poor uh, communication and poor infrastructure for transportation. And that was one of the mayor's goals was to uh, create that variety of transportation options and connectivity among our different communities to help us live and work and for tourists to uh, commute uh, better here in the county. Uh, one of the challenges also, as you all have been exposed to, and Jared, I'm sure we'll talk through some of this, is that challenge to maintain that economic growth here in Orange County and retain good jobs. 
uh, and good, well-paying, equitable, and socially responsible jobs here in Orange County as we see this new vision for the future. Um, we've, like I said before, we've been dealt with quite the challenging situation here and the numbers are pretty dismal um, if you watch the news or see some of our reports, but we nevertheless, this is a true test of resilience and we have to figure out a, a way out of it for a better tomorrow. Um, lastly, affordable housing and transportation. This was a key you know, requirement that we were looking at is not just like where tourism and the tourism industry is going, but of course, being more mindful as to as we develop more tourism products or more hotels or more theme parks or whatever, we're thinking about that transportation and housing for the people that are going to be working there. And that's has been an oversight in years past that we're trying to lean into and trying to fix the housing issue that we have here. Lastly, food and access to food. With so many tourism uh, uh, visitors that come here from around the world, Think about that food um, uh, aspect of delivering all that food. It's incredibly unsustainable and uh, it's very vulnerable. So that's one of the key focuses that we're working on right now. We actually, uh, with Jennifer's group that she may mention, a regional resilience uh, uh, plan to include food as one of those key functions of how all of our region kind of works together to support each other's foods needs and um, seeing some of the vulnerabilities that are in the system, especially with pandemic um, response that has been more apparent now than in other years. So with this in the greater context, and I will uh, defer to Jared, who will follow up at the end, um, we've really done our homework to align ourselves with communities around the, the globe, really, to making sure that we are doing as other communities are, and also trying to innovate in new areas that we are not at yet, and where other communities aren't even close. So uh, I challenge you, to, as you uh, take this uh, step in your project, you can utilize that as to how do we innovate? How do we be different? We have many uh, competitive destinations, if you will, um, whether it's Chicago, Las Vegas, uh, you know, uh, Macau, you know, the various uh, uh, different um, areas in the, in the world that we compete with for tourism, but how do we keep that tourism in our, in our rankings up? Um, through a lens of a variety of different goals and needs this time around now that we have the ability to reshift. So just for some background on the Vision 2050 plan and our intent here with this plan, as, uh, as I said, the Vision 2050 plan is, is what we call the comp plan or the comprehensive plan. And this comprehensive plan is generated every 10 years and it has the ability to engage citizens, students, or visitors, whoever it is that calls uh, Orange County home or for pleasure. And that comprehensive plan is truly comprehensive. There's a variety of complexities and elements in it. But bottom line is that it is a visionary plan that essentially funnels through and brings down to county staff, county elected officials, the legal processes of how we operate our codes, our developments, our planning and zoning, our uh, land use planning, our future land use planning. Um, all of that is uh, now, we, while we take those visions and goals, now they become policies and uh, legal implications, ordinances, uh, zoning requirements, and so on. So um, these are, are a lot of, uh, acronyms here that I don't need to discuss with you, but uh, ultimately it's a guidance document for policy decision-making in order to meet that future growth need for the county. And lastly here, I have a couple more slides to talk through the Vision 2050. I don't know why it's, there we go. Uh, some of our priorities for this time around. So as I mentioned, this is, it's been 10 years since this has been officially updated. So we're now in that 10 year time frame. Uh, some of those key things that I had already talked about uh, that I didn't um, talk about already was uh, this revitalization of the tourism industry. And uh, Jared will be talking a little bit more about what the next phase of this global tourism industry, since we've been so shocked uh, by the pandemic and where we go here in Central Florida is really our oyster to figure out what that next step is. One of those other uh, key focus areas that we have is to preserve the environmental areas and enhance those public outdoor 
uh, areas for enjoyment. I mean, we've got an, a massive amount of environmental assets here, uh, whether it's parks, swamps, lakes, uh, we have so much to offer here. That's very diverse and really, honestly, something that the typical visitor visiting in Orlando may not ever see or touch. Uh, but Central Florida is incredibly unique when it comes to its environmental assets. Um, I already mentioned equitable workforce housing um, and you know just equitable development of future uh, areas and uh, workforce resilience, which actually is what some of you all are living in and breathing in right now as there are no internships available um, at some of these restaurants and hotels and theme parks because it's been shut down. So you are living through this resilience of that, but how do we, uh, how do we plan for that better? What could we have done better um, so that we can um, plan for the future of other threats that are gonna come our way? So with that, I will uh, leave you with that and knowing that uh, through this uh, initiative that we have here at Orange County, um, we are still being mindful with the entire tourism industry and trying to keep our hands in a variety of different global initiatives, including the sustainable development goals, um, which are key to our driving forward. And you'll see many hotel companies, travel companies, tourism companies have really uh, signed on and have committed to the sustainable development goals by the uh, United Nations World Tourism Organization. I had the honor to uh, attend the World Travel and Tourism Council Summit for sustainability in New York at the Global Climate Action Summit two years ago. And there was an incredible amount of great commitments, energy, and then the pandemic hit. So uh, with that said, uh, I will let Jared tell us where we're gonna go from here and how we're gonna get out of this while keeping this true mission of sustainability and social equity, clean water and clean economy uh, moving forward. So with that, I will turn it back over and uh, I appreciate everyone's input as well as engagement throughout this time. And thank you again. Thank you, Jeff. I'm gonna take over the screen share. Um, I guess first before I start, thank you all for having me here today. It's really, um, it is an honor to get to talk to you all about kind of what the future can hold uh, the exciting thing is we are the ones that get to decide what the future is going to be with the decisions that we make today. So this whole process, it isn't just a school project and experiment. It, it really can define our reality of the future. And we're very lucky to have Jeff and the leadership in Orange County uh, because they very much embrace, uh, I believe, the changes which are going to be necessary for us to come out of this in a stronger way than we went into this. So uh, just give me one moment to share my screen. All right, let's start. Okay, so where I'd like to start with you all is where we are today. This is where we're building from. We have to acknowledge the difficulties that we're in, the crises that we're facing because we have to get past these in a way that we can regrow and rebuild into the future. And the COVID crisis and all the other ensuing crises that, you know, that came afterwards um, really laid bare the fact that we didn't have a strong foundation and we were not as resilient as we hoped or thought we were. And that's very well displayed when you realize that we are feeling consequences that are nine times worse than 9-11, which previously everyone in the hotel industry would have said, hey, that was the hardest time that we went through, at least in our lifetime. Uh, not all of us lived during you know, the Great Depression and some other downturns, but we always looked at 9-11 as a really difficult period of time. And this being nine times worse is just something that you know, no one has ever faced before, not in the tourism industry. And what that looks like in the terms of some other numbers is we have over half of our hotel rooms empty you know, last year. That represented over $80 billion less of revenue. And it's a huge number, and it's not just a huge number for you know, private enterprise, for hotels and businesses and tourism, but governments feel it firsthand. Because the way that, especially here in Florida, you know, we have these occupancy taxes, and 
when you look at that, there's 13 billion less in taxes that were received out of the tourism industry last year. That's huge. And, you know, we're all as private enterprises saying, well, we're having a difficulty, you know, keeping employees employed and operating, we're looking at government to come and save us, but they have a lot less money to do that too. So we, we need to figure out what, what is a newer system if this happens again in the future. And currently it looks like our revenues uh, as an industry are not going to rebound until 2024. So while I'm optimistic that we are soon this year going to start pat, you know, moving on a path into the, the right direction, it's still going to be uh, quite some time before the revenues fully rebound. And when you look at that in terms of the human component, which is really jobs, uh, we lost 4 million jobs last year, uh, over 600,000 of those in the hotel industry specifically, and that wipes out 10 years of job growth in our industry. Florida in particular had about 30% of its workforce knocked out, as you can see on this chart. And um, you probably are seeing it firsthand. I imagine you have friends and family who uh, either don't have, aren't in work right now or experiencing other issues because our tourism market is um, you know, on a downturn right now. And again, I'm showing these numbers to you not because I want my conversation to be about doom and gloom, but I want to really illustrate that you know we're at a period, we're likely at our low. And the good news is we get to chart what recovery looks like from here. What are the principles we're all going to agree to to build going forward, which means we get to design our future. And that I think is part of the future, the, the purpose of what we're doing right now, while we're designing for 2050, we get to make those decisions on how do we start driving into that direction. So let's first look at, you know, why do we need tourism in the first place? You know, what is the purpose of tourism? Why, why did it even uh, you know, become a concept in an industry? And the reason is, you know, most of you, I'm sure all of you have traveled at one point in time and you know that when you've traveled, it has made your life better in a variety of ways. You know, it's deepened our connections with our friends and our family. Uh, many of us have had personal transformations coming out through travel. Uh, we have some of our best memories in life usually come from vacation and we develop a better way to exhibit compassion and gratitude you know, through that process. Um, I know that travel taught me that we are all interconnected. I never really understood the web of life quite the way that I did when I came back from my first trip to South Africa. And I really saw how amazing uh, uh, all these different living creatures were and just kind of how, how important you know, nature was and uh, you know, just a connection to humanity. Uh, and the more that you travel, especially internationally, you realize how, you know, how much alike we are. You know, people may look different and cultures may be different. And usually that has contributed to all these biases and prejudices that we have out there. Yet you go on a trip and you come back and you've discovered new friends, you know, for life. And you realize, wow, you know, the, maybe what I saw in the media wasn't quite accurate. And usually it isn't. And then, you know, also from trips, usually we gain confidence. There's so many trips that reduce stress levels and we're happy. And that happiness can last and be fulfilling and continue well beyond the trip. And there's this whole concept of transformational travel, which really involves you know, the, the mindfulness going into the trip, ensuring we're getting the most out of our trip, and then ensuring that we also have this great reflection on travel afterwards. So when travel is done properly, our local communities get lifted up financially and we get to preserve culture and heritage, which is critical so that we can know where we came from, what our history is, and we can continue to embed that in the fabric of our society. Before, you know, pre-COVID, this represented 10% of our GDP and one in 10 jobs. So this isn't a side business. This is an industry that the world depends on and we need to get it right when we go forward. So, for me, the real question as we build going forward is, is our current version of tourism solving or creating problems? We need to figure that out in order to design for the future. And I like to look at include, the term inclusive prosperity. Tourism does create pro, uh, prosperity in so many ways that you measure it, but is it inclusive? Is it benefiting the shareholder and the owners of those tourism enterprises exclusively or in such a large way that we're ignoring the other stakeholders? 
And for you, for any of you that aren't really familiar with the term stakeholder, stakeholder basically represents a group of individuals that rely upon a business. So uh, they're affected by business decisions positively or negatively. And the question is, should businesses be responsible to have a stakeholder orientation? So when they make decisions, they consider what the effect is on their community, on the environment, on their workers, on their supply chain, on their customers, you know, or is it just simply profits, 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 everyone else can figure it out. So that's something we need to decide going forward. That ties right into the concept of equity, is what we do creating equity. And equity is just fairness. Do we operate in a fair way? Is everyone happy at the end of the day with the deal that we struck? Who's benefiting, who's harmed? So let's look at that with a few examples as we try to answer those questions. If we start with the climate crisis, it's pretty clear that those that are responsible for creating it are not the same that are feeling the consequences of it, or at least not that are feeling the consequences of it first. We know that those in impoverished areas feel the pain of the climate crisis before others. Those that live in luxury do not. And so is that fair? Is that right? From a human rights perspective, do we believe that a, a profitable company should be required to pay a full-time worker enough for them to afford their basic needs? I mean, that company is making money, it's profitable. Should its workers be able to you know, buy food, have housing, have clothes, all their basic needs? On wealth creation, should the wealth that's generated here in Central Florida or anywhere for that matter stay there locally or should it be extracted into another market, out of the market where that is created? Is there equal opportunity for all? And when you look at that from different perspectives of gender, race, sexual orientation, and ability, do we disregard some of those? Is our system set up in a way where we give almost preferential treatment to some and not others? The concept of striving to be the best in the world. You know, businesses do that every day. But is it really possible to be the best in the world if you're not also the best for the world? You know, it's only a one word difference between both of those, but it's a rad it could be a radically different conclusion you draw if you're looking at best in the world versus best for the world. They really need to be one and the same. Externalities, you know, who's responsible for those? Should the taxpayers be the ones that have to pay the cost of these externalities, or should it be those who created them in the first place? So you all probably have heard the term sustainable tourism or sustainable travel, and you may have heard about regenerative travel. Both of them are critical, um, and I believe how we have to align the travel industry now and going forward. But I wanted to point out a little bit difference between the two terms. Um, since you're going to, going to be hearing these a lot more. So sustainable just ensures that we can continue to sustain the system that's currently in place. Uh, in travel, it's generally about reducing current harm, it's being green, but if you have a broken system and you're sustaining that broken system, you still have the same broken system. Our past practices have led us to a point today where we have a debt in society that sustainability alone cannot repay. We're at a juncture in this world, not just in tourism, where we actually have to produce net positives. We have to create net positive impacts so we can regrow and repair what's been damaged. Once we regenerate, then we can sustain. Both of them are necessary, but we have to realize that humanity overall has been borrowing from the future. You can see that in a lot of different measurements that are out there. Some would say they're stealing from the future, because I like to say you know, you're borrowing when you have an intent to repay it. Currently, we don't have the ability to repay it. We haven't figured all that out. But if we do repay it, then it's borrowed. And we need regenerative practices to help us um, help us pay back. Sorry, just checking my timing here. Uh, so talking about, let's, let's talk about the purpose of business for a second, not just the tourism business. Tourism is one industry across all of them and businesses were created for industry to exist. But why were businesses created? Well, I believe businesses exist to solve problems and to make life better. And Colin Mayer, who is um, uh, who's very, well, very well regarded, has defined business as to provide profitable solutions to problems of people and planet while not causing harm. When you hear that, 
don't you see a disconnect between this definition of business and the way that the tourism business is conducted today? So is business solving problems? Is it creating them? That's what we have to figure out as we design these solutions. Oh. I, my PowerPoint just closed. I'm gonna reopen it and start sharing the screen. Um, wh while it's doing that, the slide that I'm gonna share with you right now is basically of this. Are you all able to see my screen right now or do I need to? Okay, perfect. Let me pull this back up. Uh, we'll go through it quickly. But so this next slide shows you several businesses that are part of the certified B Corp movement. And I'm gonna explain B Corps uh, briefly in a moment through a video after this, but there's a little over 3,500 certified B Corps around the world, 70 countries, 150 industries. This slide has a lot of the travel and tourism related ones, as well as a few others that are either located here in Florida or companies you may know. So, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Ben and Jerry's and Patagonia, Athleta, uh, and several others on here. But these are companies, which you'll again hear a little more in the next video, that have figured out how to ensure that they are profitable while delivering positive, you know, impact and positive results in social and environmental needs. And they've made their whole business about it. They're mission driven. And to me, these are the types of companies that represent what we need, period, in our society, but certainly in travel and tourism. They, they adhere to principles that make our world better, that make our lives better. So as I skip ahead here, um, I'll show you this about four minute video now, and then I'll pick back up. Hi, I'm Jared Myers, Chairman of Legacy Vacation Resorts, a certified B Corporation. Our company boasts eight locations across Florida, Colorado, Nevada, and New Jersey. As a B Corporation, our mission is to provide you, your family, and friends with lasting memories and a unique vacation experience in a manner that respects our employees, our environment, and our community. That's not going to work. What's a B Corporation, you ask? A B Corporation, or B Corps as we like to call them, are companies that place importance on the triple bottom line of people, the planet, and prosperity. B Corps are a new type of company. They use the power of business to solve social and environmental problems. And I don't just mean the power generated through 100% renewable energy, like our resort in New Jersey. Well, I'm having some tech problems, it looks like today. I'll pick back up on that. We are one of the percent more of our leadership. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it type of company. Right. They use the power of business to solve social and environmental problems. And I don't just mean the power generated through 100% renewable energy, like our resort in New Jersey. A B Corp to a company is what the USDA organic certification is to milk, but it goes way beyond a product. Internally, we are proud of our diversity and inclusion. 60% of our workforce is ethnically diverse. 50% of our leadership identifies as female and 100% of our employees are included in every decision. We also pay a living wage. What's a living wage you ask? Living wage covers essential things like food, housing, and clothing. We pay over 50% more than the minimum wage to our employees. Finally, we provide scholarship opportunities, volunteer programs, and income advance and savings programs. We are one of the only United States companies to provide a cash advance to assist our workforce with financial emergencies while building their credit. How big of a deal is it being a B Corp? Bigger than my baseball card collection. Some big name B Corps you've heard of that are part of the movement, Patagonia, Ben & Jerry, 7th Generation, Athleta, and 3,200 more around the world. What does being a B Corp mean to our guests? Well, for one, it means offsetting the carbon footprint of your entire stay when you book directly with us. We realize until we are operationally carbon neutral, we need a little help along the way. That's where carbon offsetting comes in. Carbon footprints are created every day, from watching this video on your phone, to sitting in one of our hot tubs eating Ben & Jerry. Mmm, 
stay sustainable. To offset our carbon footprint and the footprint from your state, we support efforts to plant trees and recapture carbon, thus achieving carbon neutrality. Plus, we donate 1% of our revenue to environmental organizations in support of our 1% for the Planet commitment. Thanks, Legacy. We have multiple electric vehicle chargers at each resort, and each hotel check-in receives a reusable water bottle. Plus, there are recycling bins around each property. So why are we doing this? For a cool marketing ploy to ultimately make more money? Now, my career started in an unethical and unsustainable workplace, and I wanted to create the complete opposite of that. No garbage here. Our passion is to provide a variety of options for travelers of all ages, from beaches to mountains to world-class attractions and theme parks, all in comfortable, inviting, and sustainable accommodations. But we're always looking to do more. If you have an idea, or have any questions, email me at jared at legacyvacationresorts.com. And don't think that since we got our B Corp certification that we're going to rest on our laurels. It comes up for renewal every three years and we take our certification very seriously. To those that have not yet stayed with us, we can't wait to welcome you. And to our returning guests, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. It, it still makes me laugh seeing it. Uh, that's the first time I've Hi, ever done something. I'm Jared Myers. Sorry, no, you're not going to see it again. <laughs> but you can see it online. Hi, I'm Jared it. Myers. All right. So um, I'll go a little quickly through the rest of the slides since we're on time. What I want to talk to you about right now is really what is the future of tourism? And B Tourism, which is a global collective of B Corps and Travel and Tourism and other values aligned businesses, defined, has a vision where we envision a global tourism industry that uses travel as a force for good to help cities, regions, and countries improve the environmental, social, and economic performance of their visitor economy and become more sustainable and healthy places to visit, meet, and live in. And what you see in some of this artwork, this artwork uh, below was created by a group known as Imperative 21. And it represents some of the changes that we seek will occur in society to make it more have more equity and more of a shared prosperity within it. Imperative 21 is a collective of 70,000 businesses in 80 countries with 20 million employees, over $6 trillion of revenue and 15 trillion under assets under management. And they're driving economic system change towards, a state, towards stakeholder capitalism rather than shareholder capitalism. There's a coalition also called the Future of Tourism that has these six NGOs below it that are promoting a very similar type of tourism in the future. And they've rallied behind these 13 principles and I'll make these slides available so we can read through these, but it lays out some examples that you may wanna pull from as you are considering what the future should look like in 2050. I would add two of these to that. And if I have time, I'll, I'll get into that later, but I think these 13 are excellent. Um, another NGO, Sustainable Tourism International has developed a travel better pledge which they are encouraging hotels to have their guests sign so that it's a collaborative journey towards the future that we want. So guests understand the impact of their decisions and the way they travel, uh, what that will have on the environment, their communities and other stakeholders. Then here for, I'll start this other quick one minute video. This is uh, G, or I'm gonna skip past this based on time and you can watch this, but they, G Adventures has this developed a ripple score which is a score of how much money that is spent within a given community ret is retained in that community. And in many of the examples they provide, they show that only about 10% of the dollars spent in the community stay there. I don't think that's accurate here for Central Florida, but that is in the communities that they tend to operate within. And we can show this later if we have time, but I'll skip past it at the moment. Um, Jeff shared this earlier about tourism for the SDGs. You can go there to that website and learn a little bit more about uh, what that means and how tourism can deliver on these 17 goals, which are worldwide goals uh, that we're pursuing. And if you have a business and you actually want to measure how you're doing against those goals, through Florida for Good, we have a partnership uh, and license with B-Lab and the UN Global Compact where we have a measurement tool that any business can use so we can align all of them and see what progress we're making going forward. 
here locally, Florida for Good and Be Tourism, the reason that we exist is for the reasons here on this slide, and I'm speeding up just for time. But last, what I wanted to conclude for with you is, you know, a lot of this sounds really good in practice, and a lot of people would say, well, yeah, that sounds great, but can it work? Well, I want to tell you firsthand, my company's legacy vacation resorts, this last year is the hardest year we've been through that the industry's ever been to, through. And as I sit here right now, we have full headcount. We've done no pay cuts. We have a guaranteed living wage, which is 50% greater than the minimum wage, which we're paying to our employees. We have an employee income advance program for those that have financial needs right now. We went carbon neutral last year. We eliminated almost all of our single use plastics that we have here on property. We're still working on that. I don't know when we'll get to zero, but we did all the major ones. Um, we committed to be net zero by 2030, and that includes through renewable sources, so not using carbon offsets to get there. Uh, we have recycling programs at all of our resorts. Our volunteering hours went up by 500% last year over what our goal was. Uh, we created guest educational programs, which is where that video that you just saw came from. We have that playing in all of our rooms because we had 300,000 uh, people that usually travel with us, at least under our pre-COVID numbers, and we want them to learn about B Corps and how they can transact with B Corps when they go home. We've improved our B Corp score, and we helped co-launch B Tourism to help it, basically our industry, which is very much in need. So thank you for your time and listening. I'll be happy to answer questions later, but at this point, I want to turn back over to either Alan or to uh, Jennifer. Wonderful. So thank you very much, Jared. And I'll comment on your video once we've uh, just heard from Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. I hope Jennifer's there. Is there anything that you wish to add to what Jeff and Jared have uh, contributed so far? You know, these guys are really the experts and I am ready to jump in and go on a sustainable, thank you very much, vacation. Uh, if I could go tomorrow or right now, I absolutely would. I would just like to say, you know, here in East Central Florida, in one of uh, 24 across the country are these climate collaboratives that really are really focused uh, on how do we make our world a better place. And we do that, as you heard Jared say, and you heard Jeff mention, really with that, that triple bottom line. And it's people focusing on the people, our places, and our ultimate prosperity. So we have to make the appropriate investments in the people of uh, who we who we're working with, in the people that live here, and in the places, we will all prosper uh, in a different way. Um, and, and as you are working to set up your uh, your businesses, keeping that focus in a holistic way on all of those different systems that are functioning within your business, whether it's your employees or the people that are coming to visit with you, or uh, even within your supply chain. Uh, making sure you're, you're connecting that and, and making sure the interconnected nature of what you're doing within your organization is reflective uh, in how you're looking at embracing your community as well. So um, uh, with that, I wish you all the best of luck and I'll keep it short and kind of yield my time back to uh, comments up for Jared's video. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Jennifer. And just students, you, you've, you've probably realized, I, I don't need to say too much, but I, I compared Jeff and Jared. It's a little bit like when I first moved here eight years ago, I had no idea how nice Orlando and Orange County was as a place to live until I got on my bicycle. Because when you're in the car, you don't necessarily appreciate what's around you. But when you get on your bike, you see the paths, you see the lakes. It's absolutely wonderful. The industry is just the same. Once you start digging away from the sort of stereotypical part of the industry here, you discover very, very talented and proactive and energizing people. And I think hopefully you've seen through the presentations today, Jeff from the, from the public sector, um, obviously Jennifer from the voluntary sector as well, but Jared from industry, we've got a really good mix of very, very talented people who believe in what they're doing. And Jared actually is one of our neighbors because Legacy Vacation Resorts is just down at Buena Vista. So it's literally two or three miles from, from the Rosen College. And I think the video, when I first saw Jared's video, I thought he was completely crazy. I'm like, you're standing in a shower. You're, you're the chief exec. What are you doing this stuff? He's doing this stuff because he believes it. He believes it and he delivers. And I think um, just looking through some of the comments, it, it's really energizing to find someone who leads a leading company 
who's actually doing things differently for the future. So, it, Jared, your, your standing in the shower is legendary at the, the Rosen College. And just in terms of the students, it gives an example of a very, very short video, which is very entertaining, but actually communicates a very powerful message. So hopefully it will give you some creative ideas uh, as you move on. We've got a few minutes. We've got about seven or eight minutes. Is anybody wanting to ask either Jennifer, Jeff or Jared a question or based on what they've uh, presented? I can't see everybody on the screen, but if anybody would like to unmute and shout out a question, that's absolutely fine. Um, hi. Uh, hi, Chloe. Hi, um, this is a question for Jeff. Um, in the two phase um, thing that the county is doing, you said the first phase was lead by example, and I was wondering what was what you guys were doing with that. Uh, great, great. Uh, uh, actually, so I'm going to drop, drop a link on, on the chat for everyone. everyone uh, that's actually, actually published, actually published action plan that I'm referring to. to. Um, um, just, just, just release that. that music. Jeff, you've got a very futuristic voice. I'm not sure. If in Britain, if you watch Doctor Who, you sound like a Dalek, so I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> it might be easier to type a response rather than, uh, than explain. Now. Yes, Jeff sounds like a Dalek. Okay, bad luck, Jeff. We've got sound challenges. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry about that. So, so I'm going to drop a link in the chat for everyone to review that uh, action that I'm going to refer to. Now, I'll answer your question. Chloe, that will show all the 17 goals that we've aligned ourselves with with and have committed to now. So, you guys can use that as a kind of backdrop, but please know that that more and more of our internal operations. And again, again, doing that, that walk, walk, and talk. I work, work that, that we're doing, doing. Uh, but you can you see, see how it leads into the stuff that you've been doing. So thank, thank okay, Th thanks, Jeff. Thanks, so yeah, it, it's unfortunate the sound, but if you just put the comments in the chat, that, that, that'd be great. Something very important that Jeff said right at the beginning, which freaked me out completely, but I think it gives you a very, very clear indication of the scale of the future. Jeff said in one of his early slides, the population growth for uh, Orange County is 48%. 48%. So I'm sure I'm not alone in enjoying driving on I-4 at the moment. So clearly I'm only going to enjoy it for about another year or two before the volume comes back. So that scale of growth, but I assume, Jeff, it must be one of the fastest growing areas in, in the country but with that level of growth. So you're dealing with hospitality and tourism, everyone, but you're dealing with a situation where the place you live is expanding exponentially so that, that that's a really really important message um Je i think it was jared you made it and i think this is a perfect stimulus or catalyst for the students best in the world best for the world it's a really nice tagline so when, when you're thinking of your business ideas and your innovations yeah let's be the best in the world but best be the best for the world it's a very simple line but it's a very powerful line and I think it's something clearly Jared. Jared is actually wearing the same shirt today than his video, which I didn't spot. <laughs> so, so well done, Jared. Um, and a final comment from me, and I'll just ask for a final comment for, for, from the panel. Try and be as innovative as you possibly can. It's very difficult predicting the future, but we have Joe Tankersley next week, a former Disney Imagineer, who will give some hints and tips as how, how to frame your ideas. But be innovative think outside the box and don't be hindered by anything. The key message, try and conform to the, the overall vision uh, for Orange County. Jared, is there anything that you want to say as a sort of parting shot to support the students? I think uh, most of it was included in there. Uh, if there were, I guess anything to add, I'd say it, it would be helpful just to do some research and see there are some good networks and organizations with good ideas out there. I hope that came across by my trying to share with you what some others are doing, but there are additional organizations that are doing that. And, um, you know, a lot of times we don't necessarily have to create an entirely new idea on where to go in the future. There's a lot of great ideas lying around. We just have to kind of, you know, coalesce and bring them together and find ways to introduce those into our community here in Central Florida. If we can do that, I think we'll be in a great position for 2050. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed.
Jeff, do you, want to, do you want to try your futuristic voice? Yeah, the, the, the sound has gone, lovely. Okay, what a wonderful start to not only are these two of the leading figures in Central Florida, they're nationwide leaders. So really, really lucky today. They really are very progressive. And just think of Jeff, he graduated from the Rosen College in 2009. So somebody who came in to do a hospitality degree is now one of the leading public figures in sustainability and resilience. So it just shows how your career can go. Okay, so um, before we give an applause, just two little uh, notices. We will circulate this video to everybody uh, who registered so you'll be able to watch it uh, time and time again. Uh, Jared's video is actually on the Vision 2050 website. And looking at Jeff and Jared, are you quite happy for us to PDF your slides and, and circulate uh, to the students, which would be wonderful. So you have those slides as well. So everybody, can I ask everyone to give a traditional Zoom applause for Jennifer, for Jeff and Jared? And, and we'll see you all next week for Mr. Joe Tankersley, our Disney Imagineer. Okay, thank you everybody. Excellent start. Thank you very much indeed.